everyone. Today we are going to talk about hip arthroplasty. Walking or getting in and out of a chair may be uncomfortable and difficult if your hip has been injured with arthritis, a fracture or other disorders. Your hip may feel stiff, making it difficult to put on your shoes and socks. You may even feel uneasy while sleeping. Hip arthroplasty is a safe and successful operation that can reduce pain, enhance mobility and help you go back to doing the things you love. If medications, changes in your daily activities and the use of walkers do not alleviate your symptoms, you may want to consider hip arthroplasty. Whether you are just starting to look at treatment choices or have already decided on hip replacement surgery, this video will help you understand the advantages and disadvantages of complete hip replacement. So our role today is to answer most of your questions regarding hip arthroplasty. Today we have Dr. Choi, who is a leading doctor at Puntang Chasing Hospital. He's going to discuss with us everything about hip arthroplasty from an experienced medical point of view. Hi, I'm Ume. Before we start, please subscribe to our channel so the next time you'll be updated with our new releases. Hi, Dr. Choi. Can Hi. you please present yourself? I am Dr. Chun Chul Choi of the Bundang Chisang Hospital Department of Orthopedics. I specialize in hip joints. Dr. Choi, what is arthritis? If you look here, our joints are coated with cartilage, which prevents us from feeling pain. But if the cartilage is damaged by whatever reason, the pain and the subcartilage bone is exposed, we feel. Generally, as you can see here, if there is cartilage left in the hip joint, the surfaces are kept apart. But in this acetabular dysplasia patient, where the acetabulum of the pelvis is congenitally dysmorphic, the cartilage is all worn down. So if you look here, they are all adhered and discolored due to friction and in this patient, the femoral head is destroyed due to the avascular necrosis, which in turn damages the overlying cartilage resulting in arthritis. Mm. So what are the first signs of uh, arthritis? You can easily notice when someone has arthritis. There is severe inguinal pain and limping. If you sense severe inguinal pain, usually you have hip joint arthritis in that side. Many patients claim they have hip joint problems because of gluteal pain that can be originated from the back. So if you have pain in this general area, you can suspect arthritis. So what are the medical examinations done to diagnose it? Well, the orthopedician performs physical examinations, such as a Patrick test, or bend the legs this way and that. And also we can use x-rays for confirmation which makes further examination unnecessary, but if the disease is in the initial stages, CTs or MRIs can also be required. And what are the different stages of this disease? If the cartilage is entirely destroyed, we can say it is terminal, and this would have to be confirmed on the x-ray. When we see there is no remaining joint space, and the bones are in contact, then an artificial joints would undoubtedly be required. Um, so, what are the treatments needed for this disease? Arthroplasty is the usual treatment. In the past, we used a specific vinyl called Foley's. But if we use them, 10 years later, plastic powder is generated, and this can liquidate the bone to prevent this from happening. Ceramic and metal joints were invented. But I think ceramic is better because metal also generates ions. Our hospital only uses ceramic joints. At what stage is surgery needed? As a terminal stage, when the bones come in contact with each other. And how often after the surgery is it needed to do a checkup? The patient is discharged usually within two weeks to a month after surgery. We see the patient a month later, then three to six months later. Then, once a year, we only take x-rays to see if there are any problems in the artificial joint. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the likelihood of reoccurrence of uh, this disease. As I mentioned, I think this depends heavily on the material of the artificial joint. If ceramic is used, it is used semi-permanently, so there is rarely an occasion for redoing the surgery except maybe severe inflammation, but the odds of developing a severe inflammation is 1 in a 1,000, which is extremely rare. This changed things, using ceramic joints permanently. 
We used to perform arthroplasty in patients aged 55 and above, but nowadays the age bar is becoming lower. And how many people or how many percentages of people get this disease worldwide? And how many of those people are cured? About 80,000 only in the U.S. The surgery dates back almost 50 years and is frequently performed, so there's no reason to be concerned about it. Um, let's talk a little bit about if alcohol and smoking also affect the likelihood of having this disease. Some used to say that there was a correlation with alcohol and asphacular necrosis, but it does not have solid scientific evidence. Only that there is a higher proportion of AVN in heavy drinkers, or when they are exposed to higher joint pressure, but this is only for AVN. Other causes such as acetabular dysplasia, they have nothing to do with it. One thing is for sure, if you smoke there is a higher probability of developing inflammation after surgery, but there is a lack of scientific evidence with disease occurrence. Okay, so last question, how can we prevent arthritis? There isn't a specific way to prevent it, but if you have congenital problems of the acetabulum or acetabular necrosis for whatever reason, the question then is, can we slow down the onset of arthritis? The only way is weight reduction. There's not much else. Are you serious? Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. So today the doctor explained in details everything related to hip arthroplasty, such as indications of hip arthroplasty, how the operation is done, and expected results after the operation. Thank you for joining us once again today at Cloud Hospital TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and respond to you as soon as possible.